hashing, or a hashing algorithm, is a mathematical formula which takes as input a message of any length and produces as output a fingerprint or representational sample of the original message. For example, let's say I started with the word hello, and let's say I process it through a hashing algorithm which simply adds up the letter values. So H is the eighth letter of the alphabet, E is the fifth letter of the alphabet, L is the twelfth letter of the alphabet, and so on. If I add all those up together, I get the number 52. This 52 is the representational fingerprint of my original message. That's what a hashing algorithm does. Now, this 52 over here, the result of a hashing algorithm is referred to as a message digest. It also goes by a few other names, like checksum or fingerprint or hash or CRC, and there's other names that the industry also calls them. Either way, whatever you put through a hashing algorithm, the result is the message digest. Now, the purpose of a message digest is you can use the digest to compare to see if two original messages are the same or different. So let me give you an example. Let's say that someone changed my word hello into the word cello. Well now, if I run the word cello through the same hashing algorithm, I am now adding three, since C is the third letter of the alphabet, all the rest is the same, but the resulting digest is going to be 47. I can easily compare 52 and 47 to determine that my two original messages are different. That's the purpose of a hashing algorithm. Now, our hashing algorithm of simply adding up the letter values works as an example, but it's a pretty poor actual hashing algorithm because there are obvious flaws to it. In real life, before a hashing algorithm is approved for daily use, there are four requirements that that hashing algorithm has to meet. The first of those requirements is that the hashing algorithm must make it infeasible to produce a given digest. If I challenge you and said how many words can you create that add up to 52, it would just take you 5 to 10 minutes to put together a list of words that add that up. In a real hashing algorithm, that should be infeasible. It should be a task so difficult it's borderline impossible. The next requirement for a real-world hashing algorithm is that it should be impossible to extract the original message. The idea is if I give you a digest, it should be impossible to reverse engineer that back into the original message. In fact, hashing is sometimes referred to as one-way encryption. The, other, the idea is you can encrypt something, but you can never decrypt it. Technically, our letter addition algorithm does meet this requirement, because if I give you 52, there's no way for you to reverse engineer that back into hello. Maybe just because there could be so many different words that add up to 52. So technically, our weak algorithm does meet the second requirement. Either way, real hashing algorithms will definitely meet both of these requirements. The third requirement for a real-world hashing algorithm is that a small change to the original message is going to produce a drastic difference in the resulting digest. If I change the word hello to cello, notice the resulting digest went from 52 to 47. Well, that's a pretty small change. From that, you can infer that the word cello is only a little different than the word hello. One of the ideas behind hashing is you want the resulting digest to provide zero hints as to what the original message was. Hence, you want a small change to produce an unrecognizable difference. And the last requirement for a hashing algorithm is that the resulting digest must be fixed width, which is to say, always produce the same length digest. Here, we hashed the word hello and got 52. If I hash the, the string, how's it going, we would probably get a larger number. You can infer from the size of the digest of our algorithm, the size of the original message that we hashed. That's bad, we don't want that. In a real word hashing algorithm, whether you hash one letter, one word, one sentence, or one entire book, the resulting digest is always the same length. Now, I want to prove each of these things to you. This is a bash terminal. I'm simply using a version of Ubuntu running on a Windows box, but what I'm about to show you can be done with any Linux distribution, so you're welcome to follow along. Most Linux distributions have the echo utility. The echo utility lets you send something to standard output. I also have the ability to redirect what I just sent to another unit Linux utility known as the MD5 sum utility. The MD5 sum utility is going to calculate the MD5 algorithm on what I send to it. Now, MD5 is a real-world hashing algorithm, so it's going to match these four requirements. If I hit enter here, 
you'll see that this is the result of sending the string hello through the MD5 algorithm. If you're following along, you should have got the same thing if you hash this exact same message. Now, I should mention that the echo utility automatically adds a new line character at the end, at the end of what is echoed. If you wanted to avoid that, you can prefix the echo utility with the argument dash n. So either way, whatever hashing algorithm or program you use, if it's doing MD5, if you run the string hello with a new line character, you'll get this, or hello without a new line character, you will get this. Anybody doing MD5 on this exact same message, in this case the word hello, will always get this result. Now, let's talk about these requirements down here. This first one says it should be infeasible to produce a given digest. If I sat you in a room with a computer, could you create a bunch of messages that add up to that same result? Probably not. In fact, it's very, very difficult, borderline impossible. That's what this first requirement is. Moreover, this second requirement, impossible to extract the original message, could you take from this and reverse engineer this back into the string hello? You can't, it's actually impossible. Now for this next one, I'm gonna create a longer hash. I'm gonna go ahead and echo the string, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog to the MD5 utility. Notice whether I hashed five letters, rather five letters with a new line character, five letters by themselves or a whole sentence, no matter what, the resulting digest was still the same. That's actually kind of an example of this last one. The resulting digest is fixed width. Now, if I take this last sentence and I make a very small change, let's just capitalize this letter in the middle of the word dog, you'll notice the resulting digest is extremely different. That's this slight change produced drastic differences. Now, internally, the way that works is a hashing algorithm is not simply one calculation done on the original message. It's actually a calculation done and then iterated over and over and over to produce the final digest. So way in the beginning, the difference might not be that big, but as it's continuing iterated internally, the difference is gonna get bigger and bigger to create that drastic difference. This effect is sometimes called the avalanche effect. Either way, hopefully this proves the behavior that a hashing algorithm does and it proves these four requirements. So that's the definition of what a hashing algorithm is. Again, it's simply taking a message of arbitrary length and producing a message digest, which is unique to that particular message. Now, the last thing we need to discuss insofar as hashing is this idea of collisions. A collision occurs when two different messages add up to the same digest. This is a bad thing because the purpose of hashing is to compare two messages to see if they're the same or they are different. Well, if there are two messages that add up to the same digest, then you're never gonna be able to tell them apart using a hashing algorithm. So collisions are a bad thing. The problem, however, is that collisions are unavoidable. It's actually simply a byproduct of the idea of fixed width digest. So let me explain that. Let's make up a new made, made up imaginary hashing algorithm. We're gonna call it the PRAC hash. The PRAC hash is gonna create a three bit digest. So what that means, a single bit can be a zero or a one. And if I have three of them, that means I have three positions that can each either be zero or one. If we map out every possible combination of three positions of zero or one, you would get this list. It gives you eight possible combinations. Now you could also figure out that you have eight possible combinations by taking two and raising it to the third, two because there are two possibilities for each character, zero or one, and the third, because this is a three bit digest. That'll tell you we have eight total combinations that the prac hash can put together. So if I were to run eight different messages through the prac hash, maybe that first one would map to that digest. And that second one would map to that digest. And the third one and fourth one and fifth one, sooner or later, let's just say that all of them mapped to a unique digest going through the prac hash. Well, if at that point I decide to run a ninth message, through the prac hash, no matter what the resulting digest is gonna be, it's definitely going to end up mapping to a digest that another message already mapped to. The simple fact that we only had eight possible digests that could exist, and we ran nine messages through them, meant we definitely ran into a collision. That is what I was saying when I said that collisions cannot be avoided. It's simply a byproduct of the fact that there are limited amount of possible digest for each hashing algorithm. Now they cannot be avoided 
all you can really do is make them more rare. Generally, hashing algorithms that have a higher bit digest output are considered to be more secure simply because they make collisions more rare. And finally, the last thing I want to show you is just a list of hashing algorithms that exist out there. We've already talked about MD5 just a little bit, but the two most common ones you'll see are MD5 and SHA or SHA1. They each produce a digest that is 128 bits or 160 bits. Then you also have the SHA2 family, which is a family of algorithms that can produce different length digests depending on your security requirements. So that's it for the lesson on hashing. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how hashing is actually used to provide data integrity. But for now, your key takeaway is understanding the definition of a hashing algorithm and understanding the four requirements that a real-world hashing algorithm provides. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Did you enjoy this lesson? Do you want to understand the rest of the SSL and TLS ecosystem? If so, you want to check out my new course, Practical TLS. It's a comprehensive deep dive into the world of SSL and TLS designed to make you an SSL expert regardless of where you are now. This course is all you need to help you become the next SSL expert on your team or to help you nail those job interview questions. To learn more, check out pracnet.net slash TLS or click the link in the description. Otherwise, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.